drawing those up. And, and covering the fundamentals, like telling nurses that they should make sure that patients have got enough to drink, it's pretty obvious, isn't it? It's almost, in some ways, it's patronising to tell nurses that... I'm just looking at it now as you handed it to me, um, and sort of, number one, treat people as individuals, uphold their dignity. Treat people with kindness, respect and compassion. And once again, you sort of assume that that would be done. But this is necessary, do you think, after what we've seen and under... A copy of this at every patient's bedside. Well, that's a very good suggestion. Uh, that would be very expensive. Otherwise, how, how, you know, that would surely help to maintain standards, wouldn't it? I actually think the best way to approach this is for individual nurses and midwives to demonstrate to us that they're up very pleased with this. We've consulted out of all these investigations into some appalling things that did happen um, was about uh, raising concerns, wasn't yeah. it? And how, how are you going to make sure that that does happen and actually that nurses, midwives are protected if they want to do that and need... The responsibility to blow the whistle. But the difficulties we find in, in the health service and in many other organisations, whistleblowers really suffer for it later. Another thing, uh, before you go, um, I'm interested in the professional duty to take action action in an emergency. What, so what does that mean sort of in practical terms? If somebody's taken ill on a plane or what does it mean? For Without putting yourself at risk at the same time. Of course, yes. Yeah. Thank you very much for coming to us. Thank you very much indeed. <laughs> um, it is uh, 747, you're watching Breakfast from BBC News, our main... It's been very, very windy night and a windy morning, mm -hmm. in fact. Uh, the Seven Bridge, the Dartford Crossing, both closed because of bad weather, lots of problems elsewhere. A shuffle financial regulator has pledged to change the way that banks transfer money. Steph is going to explain how and why. Yes, morning to you both. Uh, See you later, thank you very much. Still to come on breakfast this morning, she's the... Yes, and uh, if you want to get in touch with us about the windy weather, Carol's been telling us that there's a... Well, it was quite windy. <laughs> It was blustery last night, wasn't it? More than blustery. Was it? Oh, the roof was rattling where I was. Anyway, if you've got any pictures of <laughs> yeah, stuff happening us. where you are, do send them in to us. Uh, right now, though, let's get the news, the travel and the weather. Wherever you happen to be, we'll be back here at 8. Oh, blustery. Much more than blustery. Was it? Oh, yeah. But gales. Gales and stuff. Good morning. It is Tuesday, the 31st of... Chatting to Charlie about his most recent collection of poems as well. And before nine, we'll also be joined by the self-styled saviour of the high street, Mary Portis. It's been a very wild and windy night and morning. Carol has more details. For you this morning, the future of the British economy and the health service will be the focus for the biggest Westminster parties today. David Cameron told Breakfast this morning he believes the Conservatives can create two million jobs over the next four years. He also said, though, there would be more cuts to welfare spending. Labour will promise to cut business rates if elected, while the Liberal Democrats say they'll increase spending on mental health care in England. Our political correspondent, Ross Hawkins, reports. Thank you. Has announced it's to close a number of stores. Steph is here. Thank you. Has announced it's to close a number of stores. Steph is here. Here with details. Yes, morning to you both. Uh, details. Yes, morning to you both. Uh, A court in Malaysia. Malaysia has found a man guilty of murdering two British medical students in Borneo. Neil Dalton and Aidan Brunger were working at a hospital on the island when they were stabbed outside a bar. Zuklipla Abdullah had denied their murder but admitted being in a street fight with them. Here's our Malaysia correspondent, Jennifer Pack. A campaign offering advice to young people about the potentially harmful effects of watching pornography has been launched by the NSPCC. It follows a survey in which the charity claims one in five 12 to 13-year-olds think watching explicit content is normal, with one in ten worrying that they're addicted. Seema Katacha reports are expected later with the outcome still too close to call. Just Negotiators in Switzerland are still struggling to secure a deal on Iran's nuclear program by the deadline at the end of today. Barbara, I know there have been intense talks. Are they likely to make this deadline? Morning. Barbara, I know there have been intense talks. Are they likely to make this deadline? Morning. Barbara Pletache, Lausanne. Thank you.
Investigators say... A new music subscription service is being launched to compete with the likes of Spotify. Uh, yes, wait for her, wait for her. She, she got to was see this. all over it, as they say. <laughs> Look at that. Really is. Next time I write a letter, I'm going to be writing <laughs> it like that. Really is. Next time I write a letter, I'm going to be writing <laughs> it like that. <laughs> Those are the main stories. Yes, it is. It's 11 minutes past eight. Now, David Cameron's been outlining his plans for the economy should the Conservatives win the general election. Our political correspondent... Savings, what lots of other people call cuts, billions of pounds worth of cuts in welfare to come. Any more details about that? Around... As we heard from David Cameron this morning, um, they aren't the only ones, of course, the Conservatives making promises. Lots of other things being talked about today. What's your sort of thoughts on that? Well, of course, we've got psychological camp. Really, it, it is, the and the knowledge that the media can never resist a story with a number next to it. <laughs> if you want to, if you want to get in the, much. you'll be going through the numbers for us. So, so thank you very much for that. Uh, 14 minutes past eight. You're watching Breakfast from BBC News. And that's so we'll have that interview a little bit later. Uh, problems being caused by the weather. Carol's got details. Morning. Good morning. Yes, the wind certainly has been strong overnight. Uh, the Dartford Bridge is, mm -hmm. is closed at the moment this morning. This is the, and the, yeah. the Seven Bridge as well. Seven. Uh, thanks very much. Thanks, thank Carol. Now, uh, for 60 years, the village of Botton in North Yorkshire has been home to people with learning disabilities who live and work alongside volunteers, dedicating their time to helping them. Now, though, some residents say plans to make those volunteers paid employees threaten their community and their way of life, and they're taking their case to the High Court. Here's our disability news correspondent, Nicky Fox. Hero after he jumped into the sea to rescue the crew member of a tug which had overturned. He was trapped. We know that uh, wind's also causing problems for people all over the place at the moment. Uh, Carol's been keeping us up to date. Quick look at the front pages. Um, election makes the front pages. We're going to get used to this. Aren't we? The Independent has a story about what it says. Advisor on poverty. Uh, front page of the Times. Their main story, um, again, about uh, Ed Miniband. Has a good old go at the Prince. The Guardian. They're off for, uh, with a row over tax and a person. Daily Mail. Uh, has a story from the front page of the Daily Mirror. We've talked about this as well in our news bulletin about e-cigarettes -cig too. Uh, those are some of the front pages coming up. BBC News Channel will have all the latest on the election campaign. Here on Breakfast, though, the medical... Louise Minchin and Bill Turnbull. Let's get you right up to date with the latest news just coming up to 8.30. The future of the British economy and the health service will be the focus for the biggest Westminster parties today. David Cameron's told Breakfast this morning he... The weather problems some people are having in about 10 minutes' time and their disastrous World Cup. And that's going to be a pretty scary prospect for them yeah, when the Ashes get out of the way in July. It's a, it's a different game, isn't it, <laughs> Katie? You know, you've got all your reverse slogging in the one-day game, the World Cup, and this is proper, proper five-day cricket. Well, you know? England fans will hope so, but yeah. like it's whether it's a different game or not, you yeah. still need confidence yeah. and you still need form, but unfortunately yeah. England have neither at the moment. Yeah. We're mm. a bit like, might get some rain. <laughs> yeah, let's hope so. All right, Katie, thanks very much. Uh, about 22 minutes to nine. Um, abuse, cover-ups and hundreds of preventable deaths. Those have been the shocking conclusions of recent investigations into poor standards of care in our hospitals. That's why the body overseeing the UK's 670,000 nurses and midwives has introduced new guidelines for its staff outlining exactly what is expected of them. The Code of Conduct covers everything from making sure patients have enough to drink to being honest when things go wrong, as Breakfast Jane McCubbin reports. People getting in touch with us this morning, some of them who work in the, the medical sure. profession, and one's written in Colin saying, I can't believe I'm hearing the Nursing Council stating the obvious on your programme. The reason for all these troubles is poor training in the first place. So you don't need the guidelines if you get the training right in the first place. Well, that's an interesting view. Uh, I think the reports that have come out over the last few years recognise that actually it's quite important that we do reflect what seems to be basic care in this code of conduct. We know from Mid Staffordshire and from other inquiries where patients didn't receive food and water that, that that's something we need to take seriously and reflect here. So I do understand the concern for the vast majority of nurses and midwives, they do this anyway, every yeah. single day. I, I suppose but the point is being, being made in the, in the old days when the training was sort of SRN as opposed to the degree training, the suggestion is 
some nurses who do degree. In a second, but I just uh, should tell you as well, there have been various issues uh, caused by the weather. Firefighters have evacuated 14 uh, people from their homes in a block of six flats above shops, apparently after high winds uh, removed more than half their roof. I'm just trying to tell you where that happened. It happened in Essex. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, probably problems for lots of people. Uh, probably problems for lots of people. Else, lots of other people elsewhere is what he's trying to say. I've obviously got the wind in my throat as well. Morning. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so, <clears throat> you, I mean, that's from you know, your history now, but your, your book is about life and how it started and tough things as well. Was it difficult to sort of put this down on paper and well, snapshots? It's really easy to read as well, which is which is nice. It's not. And then I did this, and then I did that. It's yeah. just sort of little episodes, as you, as you say. But it's it's, it's funny how memory works because I thought, gosh, she's got a really vivid memory of all this stuff. And then I thought, hack into memory and mm. build up around it. Clear from the book and and subsequent events in your life as well, which we may come to. Are you are, you know you looked after your brother and you are incredi were incredibly close and are incredibly close to him as a result of mm. that. Which you had to be, I guess, didn't you? Because you were left looking after him. Well, yeah. You think that that built up a strength inside you, which made you what you are today. I mean, you're on the board of Harvey Nichols by the age of 30. The thinking, I've got to work harder than anyone else because I have nothing. Or a girl. Um, and likewise, my home became that eventually when I married. So, but you couldn't go, or you didn't. You chose mm. not to in the mm. end. Welcome back. For decades, North Korea has been one of the world's most secretive societies, a dictatorship where those who question the state are brutally punished and access is strictly controlled. Few outsiders have been able to experience the realities of life in the communist state. Our next guest, though, is determined to show the world what it's really like. Working undercover with a missionary group, American author Suki Kim spent nearly a year teaching the sons of North Korea's elite at a university in Pyongyang. Uh, she's here with us now. Morning to you. It is a fascinating book and so fascinating because there is so little that we know about North Korea. Um, let's sort of start at the beginning because you were born in South Korea and left to go to America at a young age. Right. And then how did your journey back sort of begin? Oh, no idea that the idea. internet existed. So no. you, teaching the son, you were teaching a privileged group. How much were you able to find out and witness of what was going on generally? Sense these young men that there could be another life in North Korea, apart from the system that they're living in now, um, in the films. Yeah, um, and and they were obviously amazed. You know, they'd never seen anything other than March of Penguins and Lion King are the only two movies. Do you get any sense of what's happening there now? 